Editing with layers, here we go. Luminar 4 or other editing packages utilises layers to get the final results. Whether that's you apply a lot via a layer, you apply adjustment layer, you apply a look via a layer, or in this case, we applied four separate image layers. And what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to show you the different ways of applying the layers. This is only part one of a short series looking at layers and how to use them for your images. Uh, mainly this will be combining image layers and editing composites with them, whether that's landscape composites or in this case portrait composites if you call a stormtrooper a portrait. But we'll show you how to do it and what you've got to remember with the layers Luminar creates the masks for you. If you apply an image layer and then you go to edit the mask, the mask is automatically generated. If you choose to paint, it becomes a hide-all mask, meaning it's a black mask and whatever you paint, the image that you have hidden shows through. It's like colouring in and erasing. And if you choose to erase what it is, it's a reveal-all mask, meaning that you will paint using the eraser tool and it's non-destructive you can paint back in you can choose the x key in the keyboard and it will swap between paint and erase paint and erase and it's a non-destructive way of editing it's utilized in photoshop all the time it's been in luminar uh, the last couple of incarnations probably before that as well uh, but what i'm going to do is i'm going to apply four image layers in total the first one will be a background layer, which is this one here, and then we'll add another two layers of the same photo shoot to get this image here. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you different ways of painting in and erasing using masks to get the layers and to get the creation that you're after. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Right, that's us in Luminar. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add three different layers in total just to show you how you can bring layers in. So the first one you see, we've got the image of the Stormtrooper here. The next one we're going to add, click the layers and add new image layer. As you see, I've got the three of these set up and I may add a fourth portrait back just to show you a blend mode. Next one we want in is the middle. Click open and this new image layer will drop on top of that so you know exactly where that is. But I want to place that quite close to the original layer. So to do that I am going to drop the opacity so that I can see. I am then going to go to layer transform and I am going to drag them over a bit closer here because we're adding three in total. I'll just take them to around there. Click done. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the opacity back up. And what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to paint him in. Just to let you see, some people prefer colouring in their layers and some people prefer erasing through layers. So I'm going to show you both methods here. So I'm going to go into edit mask and I'm going to use the brush. I know he's here and already the default is paint. So as soon as I start painting, everything's going to disappear. The background layer is going to show through and he's going to show through as I paint him. So I'll start painting. See what happened there? Right, I've got quite a big brush, quite a soft edge on this brush as you can see. So I'm just gonna paint through there just to make sure everything comes in. As I get closer to the underlying layer, I'm going to turn the brush size down a bit and I do that by using the square brackets in the keyboard. You can also go up to brush size here, the softness and the opacity here as well. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in slightly so command and plus I'm on a Mac it will be control and plus in a PC and then I'm just going to make sure that the edges are clean for this. If I paint on there, you can see that it's painted 
the underline. It's painted the grey of this layer above it, so it's painted it out. So what I'm going to do is press X on the keyboard and you'll see it jumps between Erase and Paint. So I'm going to erase what I've just done there. And that's for this method. This is painting in the layer. Zoom back out. So you can see that he's now appeared there. I am going to go for paint again just to check it. And if I want to check to see if I've missed any areas, I can hit the mask button. So you can see what I've painted in there. Next, I am going to add another layer and it's going to be a new image layer. This time I'm going to go for this guy that I've called right when it should actually be left. And I'm going to open this. And I'm going to go through the same process for this, but this time I'm going to erase away what I don't want. So I've turned the opacity of this layer down, we can see where he is. I'm then going to get into Layer Transform and I'm going to move him into position. And I don't mind if he overlaps down here because I want to show you something with the overlap. I'm also going to scale him up slightly because as you can see when I've shot this, I've moved. So I'm going to scale them up ever so slightly there, just to around there, and I'm going to move them closer to this edge. But I'm also going to have them overlap here. I'm going to keep a bit of separation there, but I'm going to have them over overlapping here so that I can show you how to deal with that. Click done, then I'm going to turn the opacity back up. So we know that we need to paint out, we need to erase this area here. And this is how we're going to do it. We're going to get into Edit Mask using the brush and we're going to choose Erase. So as soon as I start erasing, the grey of the background begins to disappear. Right, for this one, because we need to be accurate with this, what I am going to do is I am going to take the hardness of this, the softness, I should say, of this down to around 36 to 40 so you can see if I hold it over there you can actually see that the feather if I take it up to 100 the orange going out to the black and the white of the outside lines the feather is a greater feather there so if I take this down the feather is less in size and this is what we need for this to have a more accurate one so I am going to keep erasing here uh, just there, just there. I'm going to check my mask for this and then I'm going to show you how to do it. So if I check my mask, what I'm also going to do, just to save any artefacts later on, I am going to take out anything here at all that I possibly can, although we know that there is nothing there. That's just a wee check. See, there's a tiny bit moving on there. And I'll take that up to there as well. Right, so you can see actually with that the softness of the edge here compared to the softness here. I'm going to turn that off and take the brush size down using the square brackets. And I'm going to zoom in. For me it's command and plus, command and minus to zoom back out. Or to fit onto screen, command and zero. For a PC the command is swapped with control. So I'm going to zoom right in here just to show you this. Right, you can see the brush is here and you can see that it affects some of the area up here it's not a clean erase so i'm going to take the brush up a bit just to get a clean erase in here there we go and we're not actually erasing the image we're erasing parts of the mask and at that to even say that is untrue a black mask hides what's on there and a white mask reveals. So if you look over here, I've hidden all this area here and I'm revealing all this area here. Right, I'm going to zoom in again just to show you this and I'm going to take the brush size down for this. If you need to draw a straight line in any program, whether it's Luminar or Photoshop, click once, hold down shift and click your end point and that draws a straight line. I'm still holding down shift currently. So I can draw straight lines all the way through this. So if you have any straight edges 
in your masks that you need to get perfect. That's how I'd suggest you do it. And also with the softness, if you look at some of the edges here, you'll see that they're not sharp, they are slightly soft. Hence the reason I took the softness down there. So what I'll do now is I'll go in here and I'll start to erase some of this. And I'll keep going until I'm happy with everything in it. Right, for this, because it's a shirt, I don't need to use the shift option there. Unless there was something that I saw that I thought, yep, I need a straight edge here. But for this, I don't. So I'll just continue down. And with this one, because I have a nice clean coloured background, I don't have to worry about my mask down here. It all blends in quite nicely. I'm going to take the brush up. Because I've taken it into the edge and because I have a softness of 36, I can actually be quite bold in what I'm erasing. So I'm going to zoom back out for this, Command and Zero. So there you have the three. Edges nice in there, edges nice here, edges nice there. Okay, for the next step, we turn the edit mask off. And what we do is we create a new stamped layer. What the stamped layer does is it combines all these three layers into one. So I can turn that off and I can turn that one off as well. So you can see that that's a stamped layer. And how to imagine the stamped layer is as if that's the original photograph you took and then we can apply all the edits here to this layer. Because it's a stamped layer, if I wanted to, I could go in and Yep, it's going to let me do a sky selection, so I could go in and load a custom sky and I'll go dramatic sky for this, but it's just to show you what would happen. So it reads that as your original base image, right? We'd, we're not going to add a sky to this though. What we're going to do is we're just going to go in and edit it. And for the sake of this video and for time spent, I'll edit this uh, and I'll speed up the edit so as you can see the final results. Okay, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to add one more layer. And it's just going to be another image layer, but it's going to be a texture. And I'm going to blend it just to show you what you can do. I won't finish this, but you'll see the finished image at the end. So if we go in, add new image layer. I have a background already selected, my portrait background that I normally use. I'm going to click open. That will drop it on top of everything here. I am then going to turn the opacity right down to around there. I am also going to choose a blend. From this I've chosen the lighting blend and what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the mask to take off any of the elements that are on the arms, the shirt, the helmet, everything. So I am going to go erase and I'm going to paint in here. Right, what I'll do again is I'll speed this up So it's that you can just see the finished image. Hopefully that gave you a small insight into creating layers or images like this uh, portrait image here of the Stormtrooper. The masks are generated by Luminar for you. So as I said at the beginning of the video, if you choose to paint, it becomes a hide-all mask. If you choose to erase, it becomes a reveal-all mask. White reveals, black conceals. And that's the best way of remembering that. It's white reveals, black conceals. This is the first, as I've said, in a small series of layers and how to use them and how to utilise them best for you and for your imagery. Each one will go further and further into it. They may differ in length depending on what I hope to get out of it for you when I go to edit. 
uh, and hopefully you'll tune in for the rest of them. So thanks again for watching and a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video. Uh, if you're currently not a subscriber but would like to think about subscribing, please check out some of the videos below and thanks again for watching.